Good evening and welcome to Bridge Church. We are so pleased that you've joined us. My name is Jono. And I'm Corrie and it is really great to have you with us this evening on Easter Saturday. Yesterday was Good Friday. We're looking forward to Easter Sunday tomorrow. But today is kind of that strange day of waiting, that in-between time. And we're so pleased that you can join us for this really thought-provoking time ahead when we think about just that, that idea of waiting in between. Absolutely. So this evening, we're going to start with an interview that Corrie did with Helen Starkey, a member of Bridge Church, earlier this week. Now, Helen is a teaching assistant in Newmarket um, and has sadly recently been diagnosed with breast cancer. Here's her story. Hello, Helen. Thank you for joining us on Easter Saturday and being willing to share with us. So we're going to dive right in with the tricky questions. So um, earlier this year you were um, diagnosed with breast cancer. So could you tell us how, how you felt when you were given that diagnosis? So I think the initial feeling was to like numb and, oh my gosh, what am I going to do and what's going to happen next? Um, and then as I sort of started to grasp that it, it was happening to me, and that I was going to have to deal with it. It was like, right, how soon, how quickly is this all going to happen? Um, and very quickly they they tell you that it'll be like next week. <laughs> You'll have your, have your COVID test, your three days of isolation and waiting to get results back and you'll be, you'll be in. Um, so initially you just sort of, I don't think you sort of grasped it or took it in really. It's almost... Um, it's almost like a weird, just of going to like this zone where I went into this zone, I think definitely of, right, okay, let's fix this, let's get this done. Um, whereas my sister and everyone around me, I think, melted, they all cried, but I just went into, right, what's happening? How, let's beat it. How are we going to get this, get rid of this? Um, so, yeah, so after that initial bit, it's just, you then just, just like hospital appointments just sort of seem to take over your life. Yeah. And how has it felt sort of waiting for those test results and now waiting for chemotherapy? The waiting's the worst. Um, you just, you get every awful thought and emotion you can possibly think of goes through your mind and scenario. Um, it's, it's, that has to be the worst bit. And a day or a week seems like a month or a year. Um, it's not like anything I've had to wait for before, waiting for exams or jobs or results. This is just like a, another level of waiting mm. um, and frustration. Um, I've definitely found that I've, I'm not, I've realised I'm not very patient um, and I'm not very good at being scared and not knowing. I definitely am a planner mm. and I like to know what's going on. So the not knowing the no time scale has completely been a um a big eye opener and a, i found really pants to be honest for me and covid on top of that um physically not seeing people again zoom and speaking is great and i'm very lucky i've got lots of friends and family but i am very much someone that likes to see people and speak to people in person so not seeing people with this has been well a nightmare I think is the best way to put it quite frankly because it's taken everything that keeps me strong and going away um to keep me safe and everyone else safe I've had to really isolate and not do things that I normally do so yeah it's been it's been hard and a big eye-opener for me I had to dig deep mm, so tough so what if anything <laughs> do you think has helped you during this time Definitely family, friends, my faith, keeping busy, exercise, music, um, and just focusing really on on Polly, my daughter, um, that, you know, I've, I've just got to get through this and just got to get get well. You know, there, there isn't another option. Um, and however bad it gets, you know, there's all these other people around me there to pick me up and help me when there's something I can't do or I'm feeling that I can't do it, but probably can do it. 
um, you know, there's always there's always somebody there who's also worse than me as well. I mean, I know definitely through all this or whenever I've had anything bad in the past, I've always thought that, um, well, I've liked to think that God only tests the good ones. So I like to think that this is my my discipleship test that I'm having to go through now and that um, it is because I'm hopefully a good one that I'm I'm having to go through these hoops um, and tests. And certainly at this time, so coming up to Easter, um, I think it, bring, it was helping me be closer to God because I think, goodness, if he can do what all the horrible things he had to do, I can do this. You know, this isn't this isn't that bad, really. And it's it's fixable. There's there's definitely a light at the end of the tunnel and there's a way through. And I'm lucky I have got a way through. You know, it's not a bad prognosis for me. There's other people out there where they're going to be told this will extend your time. But, you know, your time is going to come to an end. Mine's mine's not at the moment. This is a cure for me. So I am I'm lucky you know um so i'm tending to focus on the positives very much not on the negatives um no, that's great you are so positive and you're definitely a good one <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. oh. it's great to hear how positive you are and i'm, I'm sure you're not positive all the time because who is but but it's, it's no positive. there's definitely down days i won't I won't say I'm always going, yay, I could do this. This is fine. There's definitely been days when I've sat there on the sofa thinking, I can't do this and I don't want to do this and I don't like any of this and why me? But um, there's always a friend or a family member or a colleague who goes, put those big girl pants on, girl, you can do this. Um, and really, I am. I am very lucky and I am very blessed. Um I have still kept my faith um, and it does bring me um, relief and, you know, positivity. Um, you know, there's a lot, I'm lucky there's lots of lovely people praying and out there for me, um, which I will say when I have had bad days, there's every time there's been a message from one of the team that's just come on cue just to say, are you all right? We're still thinking about you, praying for you, we're there. And it's it's just amazing how that has come at the times it has come. Because I know the couple of times that I have had bad days, literally, I've just been thinking, oh, oh, I can't do this. And there's been a message or a envelope, there's been something or a knock at the door or a bunch of flowers, something has come on the right days. And it has been weird how it's happened. But that's my faith. I think it's, that's God's funny little way or message of, I know you're struggling, but I'm still here. <laughs> so encouraging to hear. The waiting, like you said, is just the worst, but the little yeah. thing. Yeah. Little wait. things be a big thing or a big thing in this, yeah. this time. Um, so to anybody else out there, I'd definitely say if you're ever in doubt about, sending that card sending that message don't doubt send it you may think it's a silly little thing but honestly it means such a big thing to the person receiving it and even Polly gets so excited when she sees these cards coming through the letterbox it's it we we forget how nice it we have postmen and things and they come through actually to your door um all these things and to your phone it just it does make a huge difference mm. That's great. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Can't wait until we can all meet up properly. And <laughs> that would be so much better. Oh, me too. So Absolutely. looking forward to that. <laughs> well, I yeah. You Happy Easter. Yeah. Happy Easter, everybody. Helen, thank you so much for sharing your story, your openness with that. Um, and look, be assured that we as Bridge Church love you and we will continue praying for you. Thank you so much for your honesty, Helen. We're now going to hear from leader of Bridge Church, Andy Buttress, as he brings to us a very short message on this Easter Saturday about waiting. 
Good Friday. What a crazy name. Who, who thought of that? A, a dodgy trial, miscarriage of justice, torture, murder, and we call it Good Friday. The name might have religious origins, but can't we call it something else now? Can't we call it Crucifixion Friday? That would be more powerful, more real, and more to the point. And then you've got the name Easter Sunday or Easter Day. And that's, that's, that's a bit better. But Easter Sunday to me is now a little bit commercial, you know, with Easter eggs, bunnies, cards and chocolate. Why not call it Resurrection Sunday? It does what it says on the tin. Jesus was resurrected, came back to life again on that Sunday. Again, it's more powerful, more real and more to the point. But what about the, the day in between? Uh, most people call it Easter Saturday, but uh, technically it's called Holy Saturday or Easter Eve. But again, for me, I'm not sure those names really do the job. You know, I, I don't know uh, what we could call Easter Saturday, but it may be Resurrection Eve. I don't know, but I mean, what's, what's your thoughts? Anyway, this Saturday, Easter Saturday, is the Saturday sandwiched in between Crucifixion Friday and Resurrection Sunday. But it's, it's a strange day. It, it's a day after something bad has happened, the crucifixion. And it's a day before something great will happen, the resurrection. It's that time in between, a, a liminal space of having left something behind, but not having got to somewhere else. It is, it's a time of limbo, a time of waiting, a time of not being sure, feeling uncertain and possibly vulnerable. Have you ever felt like that? Do, do you feel like that now? I mean, maybe something has happened in your life and it's been tough. It's been really hard. It's not you. And, and there is a sense that life will not be the same. You are hoping for better days. You really do hope that there is light at the end of the tunnel, but you can't see it yet. So what do you do when it feels like this, when you feel that you're in a bit of a, a wilderness? Uh, what do you do? Well, I guess you take one day at a time. You keep going, you wait. And as you wait, some days you'll feel wobbly and uncertain and fearful and anxious. Where is this all going to end up? And God, you know, is God silent? Is he not saying anything? Is nothing happening and the sky is a bit grey? Will Resurrection Sunday ever come? It may not feel like it will. But we know that in the Jesus story, it did. Jesus, dead and buried, becomes Jesus alive again. No grave could hold him. Death is defeated. Untold possibilities arise. Yay. But let's not jump the gun. This is still Saturday. This is still Easter Saturday. In our own situation, the hope of Sunday may feel far away still. We may feel closer to the pain of the Friday. So is Jesus just in the Sunday, the resurrection Sunday filled with hope, new life, sun and spring? Or does he do our Saturdays too? You bet he does our Saturdays too. He does our Easter Saturdays. Jesus specialises in them. He has done crucifixion Friday with all its blood and guts, pain and despair, but also that in-between type of Saturday, eerily waiting in darkness for the light to dawn. So Saturday is a time for us to trust him that he will lead us through. Are you going to do that? Friday is gone, Saturday is here, it's tough, it's dark, but Sunday is coming. Thanks Andy for sharing that message of hope in the waiting. Absolutely. We're now going to hear another story about that time of waiting and the time of in-between and difficulty. Reverend Andy Buttress caught up with a great friend of ours, Josh Goddard, who is a um, school's chaplain and church youth worker in Ipswich. And he was able to share with Andy his experience of his dad passing away a few years ago and how he dealt with that and how his faith played a part in that. So 
Thanks, Josh, for um, agreeing to uh, speak to us this evening. Uh-huh. As we talk about, uh, you know, living between the, the, the crucifixion and, and the resurrection, uh, it's, it's good for you to join us. Thanks ever so much indeed. Good to see you again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was just thinking, you know, um, I, I knew your dad and, and your dad's, you know, not been with us now for, for about seven years. What, what did it, it, it feel like for you knowing that your dad was, was seriously ill and probably going to die? Yeah, it was it was a really weird time, actually, because um, I mean, before it all happened, me and my dad had some issues in our relationship, shall I say, um, where actually there was a lot of stuff that wasn't being dealt with. So obviously, finding out that your dad is is kind of like terminally ill was never nice. Um, and it was a really tough time. But actually, we were able to kind of reconcile a lot of that relationship and deal with a lot of those those things that hadn't been dealt with in that kind of it was six months I think we were given um so we were able to deal with a lot of that um and then I say there was that weird time of I've, I've rebuilt this relationship with my dad mm-hmm. um and honestly it was the best six months we've had sort of almost ever in terms of our relationship wow. and yet we knew it was indefinite we it was kind of like toiling with that I'm rebuilding this relationship but I know it's not going to last um so that was a really difficult thing to kind of like grapple with in my head um at the time but yeah mm-hmm. so so you you went through this this process a little bit of reconciliation then before yeah before you, your, your 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 dad died and and, and then then you know, that happened and you know the funeral which you know I, I was there for that wasn't I and then um, and, and then it's, it's this kind of probably limbo period, is it, you know, of, of, of feeling that that's, that's happened, but, but now what? C- can you somehow just try and express how it felt, you know, days, weeks, months after, after all that? Uh, it, again, it's, it was such a strange feeling because I remember getting home from, so we were actually there in the hospital when it happened. So you sort of, you come home and I remember just feeling completely numb and there was almost like it was just sort of nothing and um we went to play football that evening because we were like we just don't know what to do with ourselves and we felt like we had to go out and do something um but yeah it was just that that sense of numbness there was people around you doing stuff for you and it was like one of those scenes in a film where one person's in slow motion and everyone else is in kind of fast forward where everything's happening around you and you're just like i can't even begin to process this Um, and then as you say as you go on the weeks and the months and I guess there's emotions that you sort of have to deal with there um, but it's exactly that it's that period of limbo where you're like there's so much to deal with that I feel like I can't get on with anything I can't really push for anything to move forwards in my life because there's so much I still need to deal with and I just remember sort of really as a family we were sat there in limbo for about a year I imagine um, and just like you know, we, we, it's not like we were just kind of holed up in our house, not doing anything. We were going out to work and we were, um, you know, my little brother was in school, so he was doing that. But it just felt like that year was almost, not a write-off, but almost like it was a, it was a filler year. We were just trying to get through that first year. Um, as a lot of people will tell you, you know, it's the first that are the hardest. So it was getting through all of that. And then we had a conversation, I, you know, in my head, I remember it as like a family meeting sat around, but I don't think we actually were. I think it was more a couple of conversations we had where it was like, okay, it's been a year now. And actually it was more about let's honor him by moving on. And uh, by moving on, I mean, kind of actually let's get out and start pushing forwards in what we kind of want to achieve. So especially me, I was 21 thinking, you know, careers, uni, I hadn't been to uni. So it was like, okay, let's move on. And it wasn't about forgetting or kind of moving on from his memory. It was about saying, actually, this is exactly what he would want for us right now is to be able to move on and kind of achieve the things that we want to achieve, but also he would have wanted us to achieve. Mm. Yeah, that's very well expressed, Josh, very well expressed in, in, in the way you've described that. Um, amazing. So, I mean, you, you are you're a, you're a Christian, um, you know, you have been through that time. Um, look, you know, looking back on that time, how how would you sort of talk about your your faith then, and and maybe now as as you look towards the future, how, how does how does 
you know, geez, would bring any sense of hope and excitement for you. Can you can you just try and talk about that somehow? Yeah, definitely. So when it was all happening, so we had this sort of six months really where my dad was in hospital, um, and I I wouldn't say that I ever completely lost faith. Um, I've sort of always been brought up with the faith, but it was it was a struggle. Sort of sat there next to my dad, who was effectively laying in his in his deathbed, and I was struggling to kind of get that to fit with my idea of what God was um and that was a real struggle and I always say you know I I think I either couldn't see what God was doing within that time or was choosing not to see um but actually kind of moving on beyond that and looking back I'm able to look back and go okay there was so much that kind of God did in my life throughout that time um, and not just with the kind of the reconciliation of the relationship with dad, um, but kind of throughout my entire life, like um, there was so much that God did. And you could look back and go in every situation I can now see where God is. Um, and I remember there was a moment where I was sat next to my dad kind of telling him basically how I was feeling. And this man in his, you know, in his deathbed was preaching to me about Jesus and the hope of Jesus and I was like that was something that I was like goodness me it was like how can I be the one here struggling (laughs) but he's the one that's so on fire um it was ridiculous but yeah being able to look back now and go in all of that time where I couldn't see Jesus I can now see everything well you know I can see a lot of the things that Jesus was done I imagine he did even more than I can even see um and then looking forward there's that hope of I know that when I can't see Jesus or I'm in a situation where it's, it's, a, it's tough to see where Jesus is working, I know that he is doing stuff and he's doing amazing stuff. And kind of what I kind of like hold on to every day is I don't want a lack of faith or trust in him now to kind of hinder um, me seeing the kind of the, the blessings and rewards that I'll get in a month, a year, 10 years time. Um, and beyond kind of thing so I try and keep on hold of that hope every day in every situation thank you Josh you are an amazing guy Uh, thanks for sharing what you just shared I'm sure that it'll be you know a a real encouragement and strength you know to others so thanks very much uh, for joining us this evening thank you for inviting me pleasure Kieran and Sam send their regards Uh, Yeah, Yeah. and I do too to you and your family. So thanks for joining us this Easter Saturday. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. God bless. Ta-ra. Thanks so much for sharing that, Josh. Uh, It's great to see your openness and your honesty with that um, and seeing how faith has kept you through that time of waiting and that really difficult period. Thanks so much, Josh. We've heard some really hard-hitting stories this evening and no doubt you at home have been through some things or are going through some things you may feel like you're in this time of waiting waiting for something good to happen and we've been reminded of the easter message of hope by andy that sunday is coming so while we just take a moment to reflect on all we've heard this evening and you can reflect on your situation perhaps at home as well we're going to listen to a song to give us space to do that the Lord of all creation, still you 
So that brings us um, to the end of our time together this evening. It does. If there's anything you've heard this evening that you would like to talk more about, please do get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, at Bridge Church Ipswich, or head to our website. We would really love to hear from you. We really would. Uh, if you'd like to join us tomorrow, we are meeting on Zoom at 10.30 for an Easter celebration. You can find those details on our website or drop us a message on social media. Absolutely. But for now, that's it from us. Have a lovely evening and happy Easter. <laughs>